move on to the shutdown because the Senate failed to move two dueling bills yesterday uh, aimed at ending the partial government shutdown. Now we're in day 35, Jerry, another pay period that government workers are missing. President Trump calling for a down payment now on the wall as part of a deal. Airlines feeling the strain. JetBlue CEO said we are close to a tipping point in our travel. Your reaction? This has got to come to an end soon. Uh, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the 800,000 government workers and yeah. the million-plus contractors who are associated. It's not good for the public because there are certain aspects of what these government employees do that are starting to impact people's lives. And, and I think it is, it, is, it is rather tragic that this political game is being played in Washington with increasingly important public services and with the lives and the livelihoods of, of, of people who work there. I, it's got to come to an end. Yeah. It's not doing anybody any good in Washington. It seems to be, according to all the polling, hurting the president more than it's hurting the Democrats, and that's understandable because he said, I own this, and it's my, it's my responsibility, and yeah. because he's the president. And I think they've got to find a way. They've got to find... It's, and the, 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 the ridiculous thing is they're not that far apart. Right. The Democrats have agreed to funding for increased security at the border. They've agreed to that already. They've included in their own spending bills a certain amount of extra funding for that. Right. The president has dropped his insistence that it be called a wall, you can call it a wall offence or whatever. They, they are arguing over the semantics right. of what you call it, and a billion or two dollars in a in a trillion in a trillion dollar a trillion dollar plus budget. It, yeah. it, it, and, and the livelihoods of so many people are at stake, and increasingly the lives of people are at stake. Dagan, I want to get your take on this, but also on this taxing the wealthy. Presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren has in fact proposed a tax on America's wealthiest household. This proposal includes an annual two percent tax on household wealth above fifty million dollars, and an additional one percent tax on wealth above one billion dollars. National Economic Council Director. Director Larry Kudlow responded to the proposal last night on Fox Business's Lou Dobbs Tonight. Watch. Let's tax all the rich people. Let's confiscate all the wealth people earn. Let's destroy private sector incentives and market-based reforms. So you know what happens? Everybody is equal. Nobody has any money. Nobody has any money except the dictator and a handful of generals. This stuff has been tried for all these hundred years. It never works and always makes the country poorer. Dagan, your reaction? A big noisy argument from Elizabeth Warren to drown out Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and what she proposed, which, which was a top income tax bracket of 70 percent. But this doesn't work unless, I, like I said, all the other countries in the world join in and tax wealth because, as you said, money is mobile. Billionaires will go somewhere else. Multimillionaires will go somewhere else. And ultimately, it prevents investment in the United States. And that, that's what makes our economy vibrant and robust. It won't go anywhere. It'll be interesting, though, to see how the Democratic candidates for president respond to Elizabeth Warren. It makes sense yeah. for a yeah, world that right. is the politics of envy. It doesn't make sense where you think that it's a zero grum sum society. But if you understand that there actually is such a thing as growth, and exactly what Dagan said, that it's all about income being mobile, and this is actually suppressing people's ability to rise, then it's a bad idea. And it's likely unconstitutional. And, uh, and as I... <laughs> As I always say, I remind people to go to the taxfoundation.org because the top 10 percent of earners already pay 71 percent of all income taxes already. Jerry Baker, it's good to have you weigh in on all this. Uh, there's massive inequality in this country. It's getting worse. It's getting dramatically worse. What's the answer? The, 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 w what's happening also is that the mo mobility, uh, income mobility is getting less. So people used to being able to move up the, the, the mobility scale, they don't anymore. There is real concern about this. I think there are all kinds of problems with the plan that Elizabeth Warren's come up with. But I don't doubt for a second that there is increasing anger in the country. You know, we're here in Davos, Maria, with yeah. all these people who go around preaching and telling everybody what they should be doing. After when Actually, they, here on their private they get richer and richer and richer every year, and the middle class people in the United States are getting screwed year after year after year. Medium wages, and people are angry about it. And Elizabeth yeah. Warren and the Democrats are going to tap into that well, anger. Well, let me tell you, don't, you don't, what, don't what surprises me is the, the issue of education never comes up in all of these subjects. I mean, we need to discuss education and arming people on all income levels to actually be better prepared uh, for the workforce and, and what's needed. Jerry, it's great to see you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Jerry Baker.